terrific speed. Wide out along with Kelly Washington. They will be a heck of a tandem in the Southeastern Conference all season long. Kelly Washington, of course, not playing today. More on that in the minutes ahead. But we are underway in Nashville. Glad to have you along. Wyoming and number four, Tennessee. And Scott will down it. And Tennessee will bring it out at the 20-yard line. Tennessee is led by one of the nation's top quarterbacks in Casey Clawson. He threw for 393 yards in the Citrus Bowl. More patient, he says, than 12 months ago. Up front, replacing Travis Stevens is not easy. They will be running back by committee. Cedric Houston will start. Kelly Washington is injured. And watch out for this big tight end, Jason Witten. Huge, fast, with great hands at 6'5", 265. So it's first and 10 now from the 20-yard line. Clawson wants to throw, far side, swings it out. It is complete to Troy Fleming, who is knocked out of bounds as he crosses the 30-yard line. It is enough for Tennessee first down. The Tennessee offensive line, yes, Michael Munoz, whose father, of course, Anthony Munoz, and doing better after knee surgery. The senior leader, Will Offenhusel, is also very, very tough. The Wyoming defense has got to be better up front. Gave up 519 points over the last two years. John Aomoni is the anchor of that defensive line. So it's first and 10 from the 30-yard line. Fleming in motion to the right. Lost it again. We'll put it up. And again, it is complete. Pickup of nine. Troy Brown makes the catch. Good opportunity for Troy Brown for this vantage point. That is, is that with Kelly Washington out, the wide receivers want to show their wares and get a chance to get some playing time that otherwise they would not. The linebackers for Wyoming. This is a defense that's going to need this crew to step up. Not overwhelming, but they should improve upon last season. And the secondary, Darren Woodson's brother of the Dallas Cowboys, brother Armand, is a cowboy in Laramie. Second and one from the 39. Eye formation to give is to the tailback, Cedric Houston. He picks up two and up for a Tennessee first down. Tackled by Brandon Casavan. You know, Cedric Houston wants to make the most of this opportunity, and I tell you why. You know, they talk about running back by committee, but it never comes down to that. It really doesn't, Jeff. You want to have your go-to guy. And over the last couple of years, that's exactly what Tennessee has had. In the past, they were known as wide receiver U. But they put quite a few tailbacks in the NFL over the last few years as well. Both receivers to the near side on first and 10 from the 41-yard line. Clawson, quick throw. It's complete to Tony Brown. Brown was wrapped up in a hurry for no gain. Good job by Roderick Jackson, the left cornerback out of Coparis Cove, Texas. Gary Wright was in on the play as well. Poor blocking on the part of the second wide receiver. That's what Wyoming needs to do is to put Tennessee in situation second and third and long. Tennessee and Wyoming are meeting for the second time in three years. In 1999, the Bulls won in Knoxville. 42-17, had 13 sacks that day. And Tennessee 12-0 against teams from the Mountain West Conference. Lawson out of the shotgun with three receivers this time. Swings it out all by himself, and it is complete. Up to midfield and beyond, Derek Tinsley out of Marietta, Georgia. Making the grab and enough for a first down, a pickup of nine. You mentioned Jason Witten, of course, the reputation that he gets is as a wide receiver. Take a look at the block by the tight end Witten. Here he comes down right here just absolutely annihilates the defender and that enables Tinsley to get out into the open field and get close enough for a third and very very short. Well Wyoming's going to be happy I think with this spot Todd because Tennessee will have to get something done here on third and one from the 49 yard line of the Cowboys. Double tight end set. Lawson will keep it and he will have enough for the Tennessee first down. Check along the sideline. Stacy Pates joins us. Stacy. Hey, thanks, Jeff. You know, Kelly Washington, as you guys mentioned, is out today with a sprained knee. Now, he got some negative attention in the media because he was quoted as saying, hey, I can be out there right now if I wanted to be, but I decided not to. Well, I spoke to him before the game, and guys, he tells me he was simply following doctor's orders. Is it a wise decision? Well, yeah, it's a non-conference game. It's not hurting anybody. He's going to take time and rest. And offensive coordinator Randy Sanders also told me a couple of days ago that he does not question Kelly Washington's heart. This is the same guy that played with a stress fracture in his foot last year. Wyoming wants to call a timeout, Stacy, and Kelly Washington, former baseball player, 23 years of age, and a player uh, a little more mature than everybody else in uniform. 
Well, certainly, and he knows his body. And, and as we pointed out earlier, I think this is a great opportunity for Tennessee to get a chance to see some other receivers. They already know what Kelly Washington can do. Scarlett's in Nashville between Tennessee and Wyoming. Balls have the ball. They're in Cowboy territory. We'll take a break. Now looking at a first and 10 from the Wyoming 47-yard line. Play action, Clawson up top going long near sideline, man out there, and it's incomplete. Leonard Scott was open, but Gary Wright closed in a hurry. Let's go to Matt Weiner right now in the studio. No close call for Florida State this week. They can on Virginia as they start ACC play. It's Greg Jones into the end zone, just padding that lead. Now 30-0 Florida State. Well, Florida State looking pretty good. Man, rolling it up on Virginia today. Second and 10 from the 47. Now in motion is Derek Tinsley to the right side. Penalty marker is down, far side of the football field. You know what happens in this situation, Jeff, off times, is that an offensive lineman will make an adjustment. You know, just move a pad, just move his arm or move his leg. It's not that he's jumping offside, but he can't move once the guy's in motion. That's, what it, that's exactly what happened in this situation. Had a chance to take a look. Watch right. It's going to be a little bit of a hook and go. Now, Scott, remember, is a 10 100 meter sprinter. Look at the close by right. Great effort on the part of number 30 to close on a, one of the fastest college football players in the United States. Second and 15 from the 48 now. Clawson firing right side. It is complete. Derek Tinsley makes the grab. And he is out of bounds at the 47-yard line. It's a pickup of eight. Tackle by Jay McNeil. And see for the first, excuse me, Jeff. <laughs> that doesn't happen. <laughs> Old again. habits are hard to break. They That's are. all right. This, for the first time in this drive, Wyoming is going to have a third and long. I'll be interested to see what is going to be done here on the part of Matt Wallerstad if it's a situation where he's going to blitz or hang back. Jabari Davis checks in from Stone Mountain, Georgia. Played at Tucker High School in Atlanta. 39 from the 46. Shotgun formation now. Clawson. Anderson from Great. Now his man at the 31 yard line. But a lot of pressure coming on Clawson from John Amoni. You know what? Bandit slot. Still, however, Montrell Jones, when we visited with Coach Fulmer yesterday, the thing he talked about, I said, who of these receivers do you want to see step up? And he says, the guy Montrell Jones. Yes, there was a little bit of pressure, but that's right in the bread basket. You have to come up with that ball. Duskin Colquitt is the punter. He's from Knoxville. Scotty Vines, the deep man. For that, Wyoming on fourth down. A little misleading right there. Over the last six games of last year, he was averaging over 45 yards a punt. Not unlike his pop. Back in the old days, Craig Colquitt, a former punter of Tennessee in a few years in the league. And here's a short punt. The Vines will let hit, and it takes a Wyoming bounce. And they'll take over at the 26-yard line. It's a 30-yard punt by Colquitt. Well, that was a look at Washington, maybe the most athletic player in the Southeastern Conference. And if this team is to win a national championship, he will stand very tall for the Volunteers. It's been very controversial here early in the season because he's been a self-promoter a la Deion Sanders. He's nicknamed himself the future and talked about how at 6'4", 225, he is the wave. And, of course, a lot of people were ranked by that thinking that he was not a team guy. And talking with coaches and public relations people at Tennessee, they say, no, that's just a matter of confidence, but certainly that's open for interpretation. Absolutely. First and ten from the 16 for Casey Bramlett across the middle, and it is incomplete. His intended target was Ryan McGuffey, his favorite target from Laramie. The pride of Wheatland, Wyoming. His brother is his backup. Dad played a Wyoming strong arm. He's got to cut down on his interceptions in 2002. They don't run the ball very well. Mountain West's weakest run game, and they got to be better. But they've got a couple of receivers in Ryan McGuffey and Malcolm Ford to make up for it. Second and 10 from the 16. Wyoming will go with three receivers, two to the near side and one to the far side. Bramlett is calling an audible here at the line of scrimmage. Well and trapped behind the line of scrimmage is Kit Bradshaw. And he is able to get back just barely. 
up front everybody for Wyoming returns Adam Goldberg is an NFL prospect Rob Kellerman is an anchor on the right side Goldberg is six seven over 300 pounds he can slam a basketball card. and the defensive line for Tennessee I have to replace all of them coming into the season, but no concern because of the amount of depth with the Tennessee Royal program. Third and 12 from the 14-yard line. Shotgun formation for Bramlett. Has time, flares it out, and it is caught by Kip Bradshaw and dropped down in a hurry after a pickup of five. Julian Battle makes the stop. Tennessee's linebackers are swift and terrific. Eddie Moore, the quiet leader of this team, and the secondary, some amazing athletes there. Willie Miles is back from missing 2001, and they can close in a hurry. So it'll bring up fourth down. We'll see Luke Donovan. Part of the problem with the no huddle offense here, Jeff, is the fact that if you do go three and out, you haven't taken up much time off the clock, and you have not given your defense much time to rest. That particular drive took out about a minute and a half, and so now Tennessee comes back on offense. Wyoming. One of the problems that they were worried about is the humidity down here. Donovan gets it away, and the deep man will take it. And Mark Jones, and he is in Wyoming territory. It's a 33-yard punt and a four-yard return. Opening quarter from Nashville, Wyoming, and Tennessee. Very courageous on this is Mark Jones as you get a chance to take a look. This particular punt return, and this is why. Watch as he sprints up. There's really no reason anymore for a fair catch in college football because of the new halo rule. That new halo rule, remember last year was only five, right. year, five yards. Now it's 10, and if you hit the guy, it's 15. So as a result, you're going to see more and more fearless returners in college football. On first and 10, Clawson comes to the near side. Tony Brown makes the grab, cuts it inside. It's a gain of five. He's to the 44, tackled by Gary Wright. Let's go to Matt Weiner. Uh, the Big Ten champs making their season debut in St. Louis. Illinois taking on Missouri. Third quarter tie game at 14. Antoine Bynum jars it loose from Dustin Ward. James Kenny is there to scoop it. The Tigers have taken a 2014 lead. Yeah, what a great touchdown. Ooh, Missouri and Illinois. Second and five from the 44. Vols with 44 yards. Wyoming with five. Clawson firing and it's complete. The catch is made by Leonard Scott and he is pushed back. That is a gain of 12 yards and a first down. Tackled by Gary Wright. I mentioned Leonard Scott and his speed. 10.05 in the 100 meters. 6.48 in 60 meters. That's the fastest that anybody has ever run that at Tennessee. And I say that it's a big deal because think about all the great speed receivers that they've had here. People like Anthony Hancock and Miller. Willie Galt. Stanley Morgan, Willie Galt, a number of great players. It's on the indoor and the outdoor track team that won national titles here at Tennessee. First and 10 from the 32. Boston again throwing, and it is complete. Tony Brown, it's incomplete. Can't hang on to the football, and that'll bring up second down. These wide receivers are like a track team. It's, it's, I think that's going to be one of the great challenges for Wyoming today to hang around in this ball game is to try and be able to handle some of that speed on the Tennessee side. Well, the gap that you saw right give Scott is indicative of that. He was a good 10 yards off the ball in that last completion. Second and 10 from the 32. Both receivers to the near side. Clawson with time. He'll come out of the pocket. And stumbles down to the 24-yard line, tackled by Herman White, but a nice job by Clawson, pickup of seven. One of the things that Coach Fulmer pointed out with regards to Clawson is, as well as Randy Sanders, the offensive coordinator, is he's not blazing fast, but he does move around well enough to avoid the rush. Clearly, in this situation, he cuts up field, shakes and bakes, but nobody's gonna, he's not going to make anybody forget Barry Sanders anytime soon. Nonetheless, the ability to avoid the rush, I think, is much more significant than, say, a 4-5 or 4-6 40, especially for a quarterback. Third and short. Third and two from the 24 of Wyoming. Fleming in motion. Here is the give, and that is enough for a first down. Jabari Davis blasting through 4-5, and that's a first down. 
Well, we talked about how Tennessee is rich in the tradition of wide receivers. Let's take a look at the tailbacks, particularly over the last three years. This would indicate that they do have a go-to guy. And so, as you mentioned early, Jeff, the idea that they do have a plethora of running backs, I genuinely believe they do want that one guy to step out. And they'll stay with whichever back is hot at the time. They'll kind of keep an eye on who's running well. We'll see if that holds true or not. First and 10 from the 19-yard line. Cross in time, firing into the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. It is Jomo Fagan who makes the ground on a plantation city, Florida. A 19-yard touchdown strike. And Tennessee is on the board. The pass protection for Tennessee was outstanding. Clawson had plenty of time to sit in there and deliver the ball on the dig route. That was Fagan's first play in the ball game. And that's how it is done. Alex Walls with a point after attempt, and it is good. So Tennessee has taken a 7-0 lead on Wyoming here in the opening quarter. Well, for coming in and having it be his first play, Fagan takes advantage of it. One of the thing, the problems here with Min with Wyoming, rather, is the fact that they're backing up too far into the end zone. We talked about the respect for the speed. Take a look at the time. And that's a great job by Clausen from this vantage point. This is either his second or third read. Wyoming has four defensive backs in the end zone. It's at a certain point you have to say, yeah, I know you're fast, but I got to stick with you. I can't keep giving you a gap. And in that case, way too much respect for Fagan. And it's really a continuation, too, for Clausen. Final six games of last year, he threw almost 70% as far as completions go, and he's been a different quarterback since then, wow. really since the Georgia game last year. Numbers very similar to Peyton Manning at this point in his career as well. But he always gets the Peyton Manning comparison because they're kind of different personalities. They're, they're certainly different kinds of guys in terms of how they approach the quarterback position. Well, I, I think that he's the fact that he's being compared in the same breath is uh, is flattery enough. The drive six plays 49 yards 219 at a time and a 19 yard touchdown catch. Clawson on the drive three of four and 36 yards. Alex Walls gets ready to kick off. And Javon Bounai and Leonard Jones are the deep men. Short taken by Jones. To the 10, 15 hit hard. And down at the 19 yard line. It's the 19 yard return by Jones. On ESPN 2 tonight, 8.45 Eastern Time, John Robinson and the UNLV Rebels open up their season. Number 25, Wisconsin, led by the running back Anthony Davis, who are looking to go 2 0. For more on our lineup of upcoming games, log on to ESPN.com keyword schedule. Wisconsin looked pretty good against Clayton this morning. They're pretty lucky. If that kid doesn't jump off sides, they're all in one. <laughs> First and ten. Collision with Bryant in trouble. Gets away from the sack. And it is complete. Finds the target across the 25. Ryan McGuffey makes the grab out of Riverton, Wyoming. It's a gain of six. A lot of pressure coming from Carlton Neal on Casey Bramlett. As well as Burnett, and he's the one that's down right now. I think he was he was counting on the quarterback breaking his fall. But Bramlett did his Houdini and got out of that, and I think that Burnett landed awkwardly. Six foot three, 235 pounder, a four five youngster out of Carson, California. And if you played in Carson, you're a tough guy. Hopefully Burnett's gonna be able to get up and it's not serious. Another look at it. Here he is, jumps up in the air. Hits him right there and then starts to fall a little bit. You can see he grabs his left knee. Hmm. Why Wyoming comes in here in the third year of Vic Koenig's reign. Trying to come out very fast. Let's take a look at Kevin Burnett. One of the things with regards to Burnett is that last year he was hurt early on. 
And all of the coaches were saying that this is a tremendous talent. This is somebody we really have to utilize, kind of like a modern day LT, as it were. We want to see him rush the passer. He came on strong at the end of last season following his injury. And you say that's not a good sign when he can't put any weight on it. Tennessee schedule nine of 12 games here. Bill Fulmer talked about that aspect and talked about you know, trying to stay healthy. You, you, you've got to have some luck as far as injury goes to be able to do well in the SEC. And that is trouble already. Second and three from the 26. Sacked. is sacked by Franklin, the right tackle. One of the problems when you go out of a spread offense is always about protection. You put an awful lot of pressure on your front four on the offensive line. Irvin is hurt. Michael Irvin, the right guard. The difficult part of this is that this is only a three-step drop, and he didn't have any time. And Irvin, it appeared, got poked in the eye or something, and that was the reason why. Watch the right guard. He just falls down. I think, he got, I, I think that's what happened. I think he got poked in the eye. So injuries to both Wyoming and Tennessee here in the opening quarter. 7-0, Tennessee leading Wyoming. Cowboys with a football. And staring at a third and ten. With four receivers this time. Three to the near side, one to the far side. Brandon now out of the shotgun after the audible. And it's incomplete. Short hops for the target. Malcolm Floor. Like a fourth down. We are in Nashville, Tennessee, the Coliseum. Number four, Tennessee, taking on Wyoming from the Mountain West Conference. I'm glad to have you along on beautiful afternoon, late afternoon, early evening here in Tennessee. All seven to nothing. Tennessee dominating early. Donovan will punt again. First one, a 32-yard offering, and Mark Jones is the deep man, so the Volunteers will have pretty good field position here as well. Donovan gets it away, avoids the pressure, and it is taken by Mark Jones. Down at the 44 yard line. So Tennessee leads Wyoming here in the first quarter. The balls have the football after the 47 yard punt. We'll take a break. 10 from the 44 yard line. 7 0 Tennessee leading Wyoming. And a timeout is called by. Wyoming. Well, this is a little bit embarrassing because coming out of the television timeout, they didn't have the right set of people on the field. And that just is those sorts of mental errors are just maddening to a head coach. Let's check in with Matt Weiner right now. Uh, Jeff, Missouri and Illinois meeting in St. Louis, and the Tigers by the freshman quarterback consistently moving the ball. Zach Abram, three yard dive. They missed the two point conversion again. Lead it by 12, 26 14. Missouri leading Illinois. A few surprises today. Pretty good game. So. Cle clearly the loss of Kurt Kittner is, is going to be felt there in Illinois. Stacy Pates, let's go to you right now. Thanks, Jeff. I have an update on Kevin Burnett. It's a previous injury that he re in two-a-days. Guys, it's his left knee, and I just confirmed that he has torn a ligament oh. in that left knee. He will not be back for the remainder of the game, guys. Well, a torn ligament in the opener against Wyoming. Tough way for a season to end. Well, clearly, clearly you can see that he is distraught. But you know what? Medical technology is amazing, depending upon which ligament, ACL, MCL. He's got a future. On first and ten, here is Clawson dumping it across the middle, and it is complete and enough for a Tennessee first down. Cedric Houston makes the grab. It is a pickup of 11, tackled by John Wilson. 
Well, once again, the protection of the closet is getting is outstanding. He has plenty of time to survey the field. He wants to go downfield. It's not there. Able to dump it off to Houston. Big, powerful back. Able to get some extra yardage for another first down at the 45-yard line. And you can see right there. Interesting with regards to that. I, I would think that if indeed the idea is to see your tailbacks, you want to run the ball a little bit more. That's three to one ratio. How's that for Matt? Impressed? Very good. I am. A liberal arts major. On first and ten, here's the gig to the tailback and some running room. Great room by Cedric Houston, who hit the hole in a hurry and has about a nine and a half yard pickup. He's just a little bit short of the first down. Tackled by Armand Woodson. We talked about how well the offensive line is playing for Tennessee. And right in the middle, take a look at Scott yeah. Wells, Anthony Herrera, and Jason Resper. That's a cavalry. Even at age 46, I like my chances of running through that. <laughs> but again, I, I need to reiterate the point here with regards to finding that one guy. You know, last year, Travis Stevens rushed the ball 291 times. Nearly 30 per game. They are looking for that go-to guy. And the go-to guy here is Cedric Houston. who gets away from one tackler and then is met by two or three of the Cowboys. Nate Young is there. The free safety is a gain of three. Jacques Finn was there as well. Normally a three-yard gain is not that big a deal. But when you're met in the backfield, you break a tackle and it takes three or four guys to bring you down. This is one of those in the film room. Well, they'll make a big fuss over it. He breaks the tackle of God's jock and then look at all he's still on his feet still on his feet impressive young an impressive three-yard run Tennessee's got eight first downs Wyoming doesn't have one yet first and ten from the 34 Lawson dumps it across the middle. It's complete. The catch is made by Jason Whitten, the big tight end, and he is down at the 29. It's a pickup of five. Tackled by Herman White and also Nate Young. Whitten has become really a, a bit of a target for Tennessee from this vantage point. Last year, he had two 100-yard games, 28 catches for 293 yards. And in the Citrus Bowl, a huge game. Six catches for 125 yards, including a 64-yard touchdown. As a former tight end, I can tell you that that a 64-yard touchdown, that means that you got some speed, which is really impressive considering what you had pointed out earlier, 265 pounds. He was a defensive end in high school, and Tennessee knew right away that that guy was going to be a tight end. Second and four, here is the pitch to the tailback. Cutting it back is Jabari Davis, and Davis inside the 25, maybe to the 24-yard line, a pickup of three, Tyler Gottschalk on the stop for Wyoming. Let's go to Matt Weiner right now. And we'll check in with him on some surprising results today. Yeah, Jeff, a couple of stunners early on. UConn will eventually join Boston College in the Big East. Gave them all they could handle. BC pulls it out 24-16. Meanwhile, Colorado and Colorado State, the number six team in the country, goes down 19-14. Had a chance to win it. Dropped a pass at the three. Third and one from the 25. Double tight end set. Here is the give, and enough for a first down, Jafari Davis. And Wyoming continues to drive. And Wyoming continues to be tired. 21 plays to six for Tennessee. And, and again, I pointed out earlier, and I wanted to point it out early on, the humidity certainly is going to be a factor. When you're at 7,000 feet altitude, I think that's one of the advantages they wish they would have had being the so-called home team. But here, they're not used to this level of humidity, and the offense for Wyoming has got to get it going once they get another shot at it. Long drives by Tennessee absolutely will zip it out of them. Derek Tinsley has checked in. He's the tailback in the eye formation. And now it's Tinsley in motion with the left side. Lawson looks right. He'll keep the football and going down at about the 17-yard line, Jacob Bondi out of Greenwood Village. In Denver, it's a pickup of six. You had mentioned the fact earlier, Jeff, about why there was a discrepancy in terms of pass to run. I think that coming into this game, the one commodity they're sure of is their quarterback. And I think that even though there is a bit of a mismatch in physicality between the two teams, as a coach, you want to say, hey, I wanted to use the old Bum Phillips line. I want to dance with who brung me. Up to this point, Kloss has certainly proven it, as we pointed out early on also. The tailbacks have not been. Both receivers, Brown and Jones, are split to the right side. An offset eye formation on second and five from the 18 of Wyoming. Here is the give. It's to Derek Tinsley. And Tinsley is met by a swarm of Cowboys and pushed back. After a two-yard gain in on the stop for Wyoming, Jacob Bondi again. A man out of Denver. Also in on the stop was Jacques Finn, who is their leading returning tackler with 79. Of course, in the secondary, you know, the old thinking was that if people in the secondary are making tackles, 
then they're not doing their job. That's not the case anymore. You have more and more with the nickel and dime packages, four and five guys back there. In some cases, it's designed to let strong safeties and rovers make tackles. Tennessee now looking at a third down. They have been two for three on third down conversions. Now looking at third and four. With a minute 32 left here in the first quarter. And Boston wants to call a timeout. Come over to talk with Phil Fulmer. And we'll take a look at it. Coming up Thursday, September 5th, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN, the San Francisco 49ers at the Giants. The 2002 NFL season kicking off on ESPN. Jeff Garcia looking to build on last year's success when they visit Tiki Barber and the New York Giants. Coverage begins with a special edition of the NFL Countdown presented by Coors Light at 6.30 Eastern. 49ers and Giants, the last five meetings, it's been all 49ers. Except for, you know what, it's interesting how things get stuck in your head. I still remember that Monday night game. Remember that with Bavaro carried about 15 guys in his back against San Francisco? That, that's what I remember. And then I remember a game in New York as the year of the Super Bowl when Jerry Rice takes the reverse and he's gone for a touchdown and he actually knees the ball out of his hand <laughs> and it rolls out of the end zone. That's right. Let's go to Matt Weiner right now in our studio. Jeff, Missouri opening their season with a freshman quarterback for the first time in what they call the modern era before World War II. And Brad Smith has impressed. Keeps it here. 25 yards in for the score. This time they convert the kick and the Tigers up 33-14. Missouri looking awfully good there in the fourth quarter. You know, you're talking about 49ers. I, I think Jeff Garcia is just an awesome player. He just looks better and better every year. I mean, makes so many good decisions at the quarterback's level. Not only has he done a great job, but uh, an acquaintance of mine, Brandon Doman, out of Brigham Young University, who's a fifth-round pick, was talking about not only is he a quarterback, he is the best conditioned player on the team. Now, how many times, you know, thinking back to the old Sonny Jerkins, how many times is that <laughs> Bill Kilmer. Yep. Third and four from the 17 for Tennessee. Plus it out of the shotgun. And here comes the blitz going for the end zone, and it is incomplete. Good coverage by Wyoming over there. Jason Witten and Derek Tinsley were both in the zip code, but a good job by Wyoming. Jacques Braun is the guy who's on top of this. Jacques Finn, rather. In addition, he, he's able to get help here from Jackson. Watch him come over. Boy, this is just a great job by Finn. And again, we talked about 265 pounds and about a 4'6", 4'7", to go with him stride for stride on the corner. A great job by Finn. Of course, the Alex Walls is the place kicker. This will be a 34-yard attempt. It is up, and it is good. So Tennessee has extended their lead on the Wyoming Cowboys. It is now 10-0 late in the first quarter. And that was one of those long scoring drives. Ten plays and 40 yards, almost five minutes of time before the field goal by Alex Wall. But as you pointed out, 40 yards, I think you got to give Wyoming's defense credit. Remember, the punt return had them right around midfield. And for them to hang in there, I think it's a credit to the young, people, the young Cowboys there. And, and let's be honest. I mean, you think about a number of these young people from some very, very rural towns in Wyoming. And what a great opportunity it is. In some cases, two years ago, you're playing high school ball in front of a couple of hundred people. Now suddenly here, you're in front of 70,000 people in the stadium of the Tennessee Titans. Well, I we mean, really got a sense. Yeah, we got a sense of that yesterday at practice where many of the players wanted their picture right. taken out on the field. I mean, <laughs> it's a big deal to play in one of these NFL stadiums. It sure is. Tennessee has such a rich football program and, and, and Wyoming has a rich football program as well. You think about all the, the fine teams that the Cowboys have had over the years, the, the great ability to recruit in Wyoming and also out of uh, Denver area high schools and also Juco players. It, it's always been a good mix there of fine football pro, uh, football teams as a result of going for those three kinds of players. Some pretty good players. Most recently, I remember a tight end by the name of Jay Novacek. Did pretty oh, yeah. well, didn't he? Yes, he did for the Dallas Cowboy. Alex Walls getting ready to kick off. Volunteers with 126 yards of offense. Wyoming with four. Walls kick is high. And Leonard Jones takes it about a yard deep in the end zone. He's out there. Boom, does he take a hit? At the 15-yard line, up to the 16, perhaps the 17, and that's where Wyoming will take over the ball. Back to Matt Weiner in our studio. 
Well, Jeff, for the first time in 13 years, the old ball coach not roaming the sidelines for Florida, but they're going to go and pitch it. Rex Grossman up top to Taylor Jacobs, who makes the play. It comes down with it, and with that, the Wanzook era can begin in earnest. Ernest Graham in from five yards out. The Gators up 7-0 on UAB. Really weird to talk about the SEC without Steve Spurrier. I think that's a good thing for Tennessee and a good thing for Georgia as well. Yeah, I know Phil Fulmer really misses it. <laughs> this is that visor. First and ten from the 16. Here's the handoff, and it is straight ahead for Kit Bradshaw, who picks up maybe a yard. So it'll bring up second and nine. Some of the key SEC games. The Clemson and Georgia coming up. Schools separated by about 75 miles. And both programs looking pretty strong. Mark Rick doing a good job at UGA. LSU at number 16, Virginia Tech. Kentucky's at number 18, Louisville. And Auburn is at number 19, USC. Second and nine. Shotgun formation for Casey Bramley. Center. Pumps once. Gets it away. It is complete. The catch is made to Brock Ralph. And Ralph is one out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Tackled by Willie Miles. One of the things that they've mentioned with regards to Casey Bramlett at quarterback is that during the offseason, not only did he do a lot of work in the weight room, but he was a lot more mobile. His running. He buys time here. Now watch him scramble to his left. He's the one that makes this play. Ralph comes up with a catch and heads up field, but Bramlett is the one able to buy time and deliver the ball on the on the money, despite the fact he was going to his left. Brock Ralph, maybe the best speed on this Wyoming team, picks up 18 yards. And the clock is winding down here in the first quarter on first and 10 from the 34-yard line. There you see how strong the arm is of Bramlett as he finds Ryan McGuffey. And Tennessee says they have the football. Let's wait and see the reaction from the officials here. So the Cowboys have a second and 10 from their 34-yard line. Tennessee 126 total yards, 21 for Wyoming. Bramlett wants to throw across the middle, and it is complete. The catch is made by Chris Cox out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, and it will be ruled incomplete that he did not hang on to the football. So two of those in a row for Bramlett. First downs, balls have nine. The Wyoming's one. Rushing yards, 39 for Tennessee. Negative nine for Wyoming. Passing yards, 87 for UT and 30 for the Cowboys. So third and one. Third and 10 from the 34-yard line. Shotgun formation for Casey Bramlett. Three receivers to the near side. He'll roll. In trouble. Gets the football away, and it is intercepted. Picked off by Julian Bartles, the strong safety. Well, never mind the fumble. They get the pass interception of Bramlett. A lot of pressure by Eddie Moore on the quarterback. Battle's able to get his arms underneath this one, and there's no doubt about the interception. And once again, under all sorts of duress is Bramlett. Fading to his left. Has to... Avoids one sack, throws it just before he gets whacked. There's just no way he can have any accuracy on this ball. Battle hangs with Ralph all the way, able to get his arms underneath him. That's a pick for the Volunteers. Brown to the left. Jones goes to the right. On first and ten. Wyoming up 10-0. Lawson across the middle, and it is complete. Jason Witten making the catch, a gain of seven. Second and three. Tackle by Herman White and Tyler Gottschalk. The ESPN2 game track. Tennessee is dominated through the air. Firing into the end zone for the touchdown. Made it seven to nothing. Only down note has been the injury to Burnett. Torn ligament in his knee. Second and three from the 35. Boston with plenty of time, firing and incomplete. Target was Leonard Scott. He was open, but the ball wasn't there. Well, Clausen complains about the fact that he was waiting for Scott to cut across. Evidently, Scott was looking at a hook route. You can see Clausen's not very happy with that. He was looking more for a dig to come across the middle of the field.
asking Clawson about the Heisman race and about possible national championship this season he said well you know playing at Tennessee is about expectation it is about you know if you can't handle that kind of pressure you don't come to school here and you don't play football at UT third and three now for Clawson pumps keep the football first down and down he goes at the 26 yard line pickup of about eight eight and a half yards this is a nice job by Cedric Houston he was going to dump it to him underneath and at the last minute he decided to run Houston realizing this is going to make a block watch number 21 in the middle of the field this is who he's nope I changed my mind. now I'm going to run now watch Houston he's able to get under just a little bit of the linebacker and enable Clawson to get the first down you know, Clawson has put on some weight from last year he's up about 13 to 15 pounds from a year ago quarterbacks hanging out in weight rooms can be very rare First and 10 from the 27 yard line of the Wyoming Cowboys. Handoff is to the back. And that is the line of scrimmage. And Russell down is Cedric Houston. The defensive play by Tyler Gottschalk, his third tackle of the ball game. Six foot, six foot four, 240 pounds. That's actually quite large for a weak side linebacker. But he makes the plays. Last year's leading tackler, Leo. Leo, I want to pronounce this right. Karras, he's long gone, so Gazchak has some big shoes to fill. Well pronounced. Ah. Second and ten, here is the pitch. And some running room for Cedric Houston. Houston on his way. Touchdown, Tennessee. <laughs> 27 yard touchdown run by Cedric Houston. We were talking about Tyler Gottschalk. He had a chance at Houston and missed the tackle. So Tennessee extends their lead. The point after attempt coming. Alex Walls from Bristol, Virginia. And the point after attempt is good. So at 12.56 left before halftime, all Tennessee, Cedric Houston scampers into the end zone for six. Alex Walls has been busy. Point after attempts are kicking off. Bo Knight and Jones are the deep men. There is the kick. It is high and it is short. Second by Leonard Jones. 15, 20, across the 25-yard line and down at the 26. It's a return of 17 yards. Let's check in with Stacy Pates. Thanks, Jeff. You could say Cedric Houston walks, or as in this case with that touchdown, he runs in wisdom and peace. That's because each week he folds a piece of paper neatly into his right shoe and written on it a quote or scripture. This week, he said their words from Walter Payton. The quote says, after all, faith is believing. There's things unseen, and we walk in faith, not by sight. I figure his team has a lot of faith in him as well. Pretty good quote from a pretty good football player. Stole it from Paul, Hebrews 11-1. <laughs> I, I didn't know Walter Payton was one of the apostles. Come to think of it. First and 10 from the 25. Interesting offensive formation by Wyoming. Play action, and the gift is to the running back. And it is Brandy Russell who picks up three. It'll bring up second and seven. They've got three receivers kind of lined up like they're getting ready to catch a subway along the near side there. I've never been a fan of that. As if somebody's going to be fooled if they're lined up. What are you going to do? This is still the same routes, but I guess deception. Big deal. Second and seven. Three receivers to Bramlett. Play action rolling to the right side. Setting. And it's complete. Catch made by Ryan McGuffey. And McGuffey with a pickup of 10. That's enough for a Wyoming first down. One of the things that they're trying to do now is buy time for Bramlett, and that's the result of the rollout. But this time they roll to the right, which is certainly more comfortable for a right-handed thrower. And McGuffey put together some pretty good numbers in 2001 able to make a catch and get a first down it was number eight in the NCAA of receptions per game banged up his shoulder toward the end of the season didn't play in the final two games but a healthy McGuffey's going to mean some good things for Wyoming first and ten from the 39 
three receivers again for the Cowboys. Here comes the blitz. Bramlett in trouble, and it's incomplete. Just trying to run for his life and dump it off to Brandy Rawson. Bramlett is from Wheatland, Wyoming. Comes from a football family. His dad was a fullback and a lineman for the Cowboys. His two brothers are big football players, too. One in high school. Other now backs him up on this Wyoming Cowboys team. They are the pride of Wheatland. Into the first family of football in the state of Wyoming. Here at second and ten from the 39. Tennessee showing blitz. Here they come. Trying to set up the screen. It's to Brandy Russell. Russell right side. Running room. And into Tennessee territory and up for a first down. Tackled by Jabari Greer. It's a gain of 13. Nothing better than to have the screen called when the blitz comes. And Bramlett does a nice job of acting as he backs up just enough for the Tennessee people to come in on him. Here they come. He waits, he waits, bides his time, gets the ball to Russell, gets some nice blocks downfield. Not for the shoestring run, and a lot of extra yards. Wyoming trying to move up the tempo a bit here on first and ten. Scotty Vines, the wide receiver, and it was up for grabs, but nobody from Tennessee was near. For Bramlett, really his Achilles has been the number of interceptions that he has thrown. Koning has said that he is similar to John Elway in arm strength. Koning was with the Denver Broncos in 83 for a while, so we get to see Elway up close. But it compares him to Elway as far as arm strength. Second and ten from the 47 of the Tennessee Volunteers. Bramble throwing, completing catches made by Scotty Hines and thrown to the turf, gain of six yards. All right, bring up third down, tackle by Wilson. Nice 360 move by Vines to get a little extra yardage. Mountain West Conference last year. Cowboys were 0 and 7, 2 and 9 overall. Third and four. Wyoming 0 for 3 on third down conversions. Play fake. Bramlett gets it away and overshoots his intended receiver, but penalty marker goes flying. 24 yard line. Ryan McGuffey was the intended target. The officiating crew is from the Mountain West. Our referee Gerald Wright. Umpire is Robert Collins. And the linesman is Tim Pazzara. And it'll be a hold against Wilson. Gabriel Wilson out of San Jose, California. So first down for Wyoming. Trying to get on the scoreboard here. Their best drive of the ball game. Holding before the ball was in the air against an eligible receiver. 10 yard penalty, previous spot. First down. And you look at that secondary for Tennessee, though, and all the great speed they have, and really great hitters as well. One of the strengths of this football team. So, first and 10 from the 30 yard line. of interceptions with Bramlett and they have bit him here in the first half and this and that conversation is about not forcing the ball he just absolutely does not see the middle linebacker throws it right between the five and the zero Vic Koenig the former Kansas State linebacker
So first and 10 from the 20 yard line for Tennessee. Casey Clawson remains at quarterback. Good fake. He'll keep the football. Very long. He'll throw it. And out there. Dive and catch. Wyoming says it's incomplete. But the officials say Tony Brown made the grab. And enough for a first down. Great play by Clawson. As he pulls up at the last possible moment and gets rid of the football. I don't think the debate is over the catch. He caught the ball. It's whether or not he was in bounds. Watch the catch. He lands right on the chalk, but he also lands on the grass. What a great leap. Wide receiver you. First and ten from the 49-yard line. The give is to Jafari Davis. This is off one tackler. Jock Finn picks up a couple of yards. Let's go to our studio right now and Matt Weiner. Jeff, Mississippi State playing in the Pacific time zone for the first time in 25 years at Oregon where the time has come for Jason Fife, the man under center replacing Joey Harrington in to complete an 80-yard drive, 7-0 Oregon. Mississippi State expected to have a pretty good football team as well this year. A lot of pressure on that young man replacing Joey Harrington. Oh, yeah. Second and eight for the balls. And the give is to Jabari Davis. Met at the line of scrimmage by Guy Duell out of Yuma, Colorado. Pickup of one. at Central Michigan next week and home at Boise State 14th of September Tennessee meanwhile home with Middle Tennessee and then Florida at home 21st of September so third and eight Tennessee four of six on third down conversions and Casey Clawson wants to burn a timeout and that's exactly what he will do he'll come over Tennessee sideline. It is 17-0. Balls lead the Cowboys from Laramie. From the 49 of Wyoming. Clawson after the timeout. And the shotgun formation. He's got four receivers. Two to the right and two to the left. Here comes the blitz. And it's incomplete. The target was C.J. Payton. And he couldn't hang on to the football. McNeil on the coverage for Wyoming. Despite the fact that there was a blitz, it's pretty good coverage. He has time, but McNeil's there to bat it away. Scotty Vines, the deep man for Wyoming, and Dustin Colquitt. Colquitt on the punt. The punt. He punted once before. 30-yard punt. This time a high, booming spiral. The Vines will let hit. Puts it to five. Tennessee can't save the football, so they'll come out to the 20-yard line. That's where Wyoming will take over. It's a 49-yard punt by Colquitt. All right, we'll take a break. 17-0. Balls have the lead. Wyoming has the football. Tennessee with 199 total offensive yards. Wyoming with 56. Cowboys down 17-0. They've got a first and 10 from their 20. Bramlett firing and made on block route, the right hit. Penalty marker goes flying. Rashad Baker is the man who hit Ralph. One of the things they're cracking down on is as to whether or not uh, the defender can stop. In this case, clearly he can. The ball is well passed. He decides to take the cheap shot, and he's going to be punished for it. He's, he's actually coming down, so you oh. know right there that he's not going to get the ball. And, of course, the defenders get excited, and I don't know what the crowd's booing for. That, that's when you say to your son, maybe baseball is the sport you should have played as a kid. <laughs> oh, what a hit. <laughs> so 
So first and ten for the Cowboys. Found on their feet a little bit here in Nashville. Trying to make some noise. Their team up 17 nothing. Bramble from the shotgun formation. Here's the draw. It is to kick Bradshaw. And Bradshaw picks up one yard. He'll bring up second and nine. Tackle by Kevin Simon. If you're Wyoming, what are you trying to do at this point, Todd? Trying to get a big play or a long drive? Here is the draw. It is to Bonine. And Bonine getting into Tennessee territory enough for a first down. Maybe a couple of more plays like that. Willie Miles makes the tackle. It is a gain of 17. This is the first time in the first half that the no huddle didn't necessarily confuse Tennessee, but they were caught in between their defensive calls. It was always a nice game. So with the football in Tennessee territory in the first down, the Wyoming offense moving for the second time here in the first half. The other time, Brandon was picked off and was snubbed out. Quick drop, firing, and it's incomplete. Brock Ralph was the man trying to make the catch. Stacy Pates is with the mother of Casey Clawson. Stacey? That's right, a very proud mother at that. This is uh, Kathy Clawson. Now, she and Jim don't get to make all the games of Casey because they've got another son, Ricky, that is quarterback at LSU. Now, how do you and your husband get to see their, your sons play? We take turns. We, uh, I go to one game, he goes to another game, and then we call each other during the games and see what's going on. But, guys, they're blessed this weekend because after this game and watching Casey play here, he, they're going to head out to... Uh, you tomorrow and they're going to watch uh, Ricky play against Virginia Tech. Now, when you see this game in Tennessee, how do you see Casey handle the pressure of being a quarterback on this kind of program? He, he handles it really well. He, he just stays calm and he just stays focused and that's the main thing. He just stays really focused on what his job is and the team. Anything you want to say to Ricky? I'm sure he's watching. I love you, Rick. Good luck tomorrow. Well, they'll make that trip to LSU tomorrow, guys. It's always good to have a shout out, particularly on national television. Big fall in order for the Boston right Panthers. Third and ten. Shotgun formation for Casey Bramley from Wheatland, Wyoming. And it's incomplete at the 40 yard line. A lot of pressure coming his way. Bo Knight. Out of Denver, the wide receiver. He was a quarterback in high school, at Manual High School in inner city Denver. And has been moved to a wide receiver slot. So it'll bring up fourth down, and Wyoming will have to punt the football. Luke Donovan is the punter. Had two punts, averaging 39 yards per punt. Deep man is Mark Jones. Donovan gets it away. It is an end over end punt. And it hits. And it takes a nice Wyoming bounce inside the five down to the three yard line. So nice job by Luke Donovan from Spearfish, South Dakota, as he did a fine job. 45 yard punt. Coming up on ESPN2, 8.45 Eastern Time. It's number 25, Wisconsin, taking on UNLV. And you can see it right here on ESPN2. The trends. Gary Alvarez has done such a great job in Madison. John Robinson at UNLV. First and ten from the three for the balls. Up 17-0 on Wyoming. Give is to the tailback at the line of finish. And Fleming is roughed up at the line by a lot of Cowboys. No game. Let's go to Matt Weiner in our studios right now. Hi, right, Jeff, we showed you Jason Fife running one in earlier at Austin Stadium. Fife then looking to throw. He's got George Weitzer in the end zone. So the Ducks up early on Mississippi State now, 14 up. So Oregon extending their lead on Mississippi State. 
second and ten with the ball at the three yard line. Again, this to Cedric Houston. Houston, who has already run for a touchdown. It's a gain of three. And it'll bring up second and seven. Tackle by Brandon Casavet. Great opportunity for Wyoming here if they can hold him here on third down to get the ball back near midfield and get something going. Hopefully get some points before half. How good is it for a program like Wyoming to come here and face Tennessee? Is it a good for, uh, a good thing for them long term? Talk about that after this play. Third and eight. Clawson. And his end zone short hops the football to Troy Fleming, and it's incomplete. So it'll bring up fourth down. It's a great opportunity for the young people to experience big time football, but one of the concerns you have, obviously, is injury early on. You don't want to get people hurt when they're overmatched for the league season. But thus far, I think the defense in particular for Wyoming has shown themselves pretty proud. Dustin Colquitt is the punter, and he stands about eight yards deep in his end zone. The deep man is Scotty Vines. So Wyoming should have some pretty good field position here. Ah, booming spiral turning over. Far side of the field, Vines takes it. Now reverses his field. He has some running room if he can turn the corner. And no! Drop down. Nice tackle. Good job by Mark Jones. We'll take a break, 534 left before halftime. Tennessee, 17. Wyoming, nothing. Exceptions. Two receivers to the right, one lead, uh, to the right and two to the left now. Shotgun formation. And Seashore and Blitz here they come to all play. It is to Kit Bradshaw, and Bradshaw picks up three yards, so second in seven. Tackle by Edward Kendrick. anything on the ground which not surprising when you look at this football team last year they weren't able to run the ball either second and eight from the 44 here is the handoff it is to Kit Bradshaw and Bradshaw picks up two tackle by Julian Battle let's check in with Matt Weiner now Jeff coming up at halftime we've got you covered from A to Zook the Ron Zook of Gator football begins in Florida. Meanwhile, the big game in the big house, we've got the big finish between Washington and Michigan. All that plus a Rocky Mountain upset. Colorado State a winner today. All right, Matt, thanks. Zero for four. The Cowboys on third down conversions. Third and seven. Granite back down incomplete. Uh, it'll be a fourth down. Omari Hand, as the name implies, was able to put his hand on the football and swat it down. Tennessee, since 1993, has had 50 players drafted by the NFL. That's impressive. So it'll bring up fourth down, and we will see Luke Donovan. The man from Spearfish. Mark Jones is deep stand at his own 14 yard line. And Donovan gets away from all of the pressure. Looking by Jones. Into the trail, 25 and down to the 27 yard line before he is hit by Nate Young. So Tennessee will take over the football. It's a 42 yard punt and a 12 yard return. Big party festival here in Nashville. Chance to come here and hang out in this great downtown area. Really, it's been helped by the Tennessee Titans in this great stadium. One of the great stadiums in the National Football League. On first and ten from the 28, two receivers are split to the far side. I formation. Blossom play action. They'll keep the football slides down to short of the 35 yard line pickup of about seven yards but 
spotted about six, so it's second and four. Well, we've seen Casey Clawson keep the football a number of times this afternoon as he sees some daylight keeping the football and enough presence of mind to realize that, you know, he's not Mike Vick. And when he sees the pressure coming, he gets down. Second and four, play action. Clawson firing man out there. The catch is made. Tony Brown, first down for Tennessee. And a nice pickup by the Volunteers of 16 yards. But, oh, he is hurting. Brown is limping. First down, Tennessee. It's actually a good catch because the ball's thrown a little bit behind him. It appeared that he cramped up. Watch the catch. He comes back. It's a great effort. And when he comes up and grabs his calf, it would appear that maybe he's a little bit depleted in the fluids. And that'll happen on a humid night like this. First and ten from the 49, handoff straight ahead. It is the running back, Cedric Houston. Cedric Houston back here. After a couple yards, about three yards on the pickup. Second and seven. Clock running at 2.52 left here in the first half. It's a great Michigan game today with Washington. Colorado State upsetting Colorado at mile high. Have some highlights coming up at halftime from that liner. Second and seven out from the 48. Lawson. Penalty marker. It is complete. Catch is made by Peyton. Let's see what the penalty marker is about. I think it's coming back. So as far as penalties go, Tennessee has now been penalized four times for 45 yards. I haven't seen too many mistakes in this game, Todd, for an opener. Personal foul, hands of the face, offense, 15-yard penalty, repeat, second down. No penalties against Wyoming today. I think you're right for an opener that is impressive. Typical of openers are numerous penalties. And Special teams gas, and that has not been the case. So second and long, second and 22. Tennessee 17, Wyoming nothing. Lawson across the middle, complete catch is made at the 49-yard line by Fagan. He makes the grab, tackled by Jay McNeil, pickup of 11 yards. And that'll cut half of the needed yards for the first down. Catches like this are the type that impress the coaches, too. Your willingness to go over the middle and sacrifice your body. Inside Kelly Washington coming back. That bodes well for that young man to get some playing. 39. Minute 35 left here in the first half. Here comes the blitz. Clawson gets it away. It's intercepted. Wyoming has the interception. And Good field position is Nate Young. His first back for the ball is loose. Was the whistle blown or not? No. So Tennessee will get it back. Wyoming contending that the ball had been blown dead. Respert with the hit. On top of that, because it's change of possession, it'll be first down. Boston looking all the way. Young comes in, makes the interception. Great play. Now right here, he gets the ball stripped out from him. And the argument right there would be as to whether or not his forward motion was stopped. Evidently, the officials didn't feel that that was the case. And Jason Westbrook comes up with the recovery. There's the strip right there at the end. Lee Fleming is one of the ones stripping the ball. So on first and ten, here is Clawson across the middle, and it is complete to Fagan, who makes the catch. And it's enough for a first down for the Volunteers, under a minute. ESPN2 College Football from the Coliseum in Nashville, Tennessee. Number four, Tennessee, taking on Wyoming. And the Walls have something going here. It's second and less than one. And we'll see how the spot is from the officiating crew here. 
I don't know if they have it or not, Todd. It looks like it may be just a little bit short. Tennessee, Tennessee has been dominant, as you might guess. Leading 17-0, they also lead in about every statistical department you can imagine in this football game. We've got 33 seconds left. Tennessee has taken a timeout. We'll take a break. For halftime, Ball's trying to tack on some more points here, looking at a third and less than one from the 34-yard line. Shotgun formation for Clawson. And it is complete. The big tight end, Jason Witten, makes the grab a pickup of eight yards and enough for a first down. Clock with 26 seconds left. Tackled by Roderick Jackson. Hurry up offense. Clawson swinging it out. for another first down with 15 seconds left. It's a gain of 15. Thursday, September 5th, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. The 2002 NFL season kicks off on ESPN. Jeff Garcia and the 49ers looking to build on last year's success when they take on Tiki Barber and the New York Giants. Our coverage begins with a special edition of NFL Countdown presented by Coors Light at 6.30 Eastern. First and ten with 15 seconds left in the first half for Casey Clawson and the Tennessee Volunteers. Three receivers now for Clawson. And it is complete. Witten makes the drive inside the five. Trying to get toward the end zone. Tackled by Tyler Gaston. A gain of 13 yards. Six seconds remain. Tennessee in a hurry-up mode trying to get the field goal. Alex Walls running out onto the field. Now they will try and get three points out of this. This will be a 20-yard attempt for Alex Walls. It is up and it is gone. So Tennessee now leading the Cowboys of Wyoming by a score of 20 to nothing with two seconds left here in the first half. Nice hurry-up job done by the Walls here on the opening game of the season. Jason Witten comes across and does an excellent job of reaching back for the ball and then powering the Cowboys down the middle. This is a tough catch sometimes. Have to reach back like this. But he gets right in the middle of the field, although I doubt that that was planned. Where essentially an extra point converts for three points. Tennessee always opportunistic. They will do that during the course of the season. Good teams always are able to take advantage of the mistakes of others. You were that big as a tight end, weren't you? No, I was not. Number 19, Alex Walls, kicking off for Tennessee. 20 to nothing is our score here. Two seconds left. Alex Walls will be kicking off. And Leonard Jones is the deep man, skipping up to Bo Knight. And Bo Knight is spun down at the 27-yard line. Tackle by Mark Jones. It's a return of 14 yards, and it is the end of the first half. All Tennessee here in the first two quarters from Nashville in the Coliseum, leading and we are underway here in the second half it is high and it is deep picks Leonard Jones deep into the end zone and a touchback they'll bring it out at the 20 yard line let's take a look at our ESPN 2 game track the mistakes have hurt the Wyoming Cowboys interceptions last year and they begin here in Tennessee in 2002 the same way the only down note for Tennessee has been the injury Burnett who tears a knee ligament and that is a big loss for Tennessee so it's first and ten from the 20 yard line for the Cowboys Casey Bramlett in the first half 7 of 19 with two pass interceptions long gain of 18 yards Under center he wants to throw 
And it's incomplete. Coming across the middle was Brock Rau. Well, the numbers, of course, speak volumes. They're not lies and damn lies and statistics in this case. You can see the numbers, particularly, uh, I think particularly dominant is the rushing yards. Wyoming has seven carries for zero yards. And you mentioned the fact that how they struggle in running the ball. Their leading runner from last year, Derek Armar, is not here because of a suspension. So their leading rusher, Kip Bradshaw, only 130 yards in 2001. So. Difficulties continue in the rushing game for the Cowboys. They averaged 99 yards per game last year. Here is the handoff over the right side is Kit Bradshaw, and he is cracked up by Julian Battle. So it will be third and about eight yards. Battle has been all over the field in the first half. And if you're at home saying to yourself, why do they continue to run, Todd? You just pointed out that they have eight carries now for two yards. They have to. You have to do that simply because of the fact that if Bramlett is forced to pay back every single time, then Tennessee would break their record of 13 sacks against them. Wyoming zero for five on third down conversion, staring at a third and eight. From his shotgun, Casey Bramlett, and this is complete and very close to a first down. Kit Bradshaw just a little bit short. Tackle by Willie Miles. Too bad because of the nose of the ball touches the chalk in any way they could have the first, but he's just going to be a little bit short. And I don't know if this is necessarily decision time. It is fourth down and plenty of the sec second half. But I find it interesting that Vic Coning took his time. He actually deliberated over the possibility of going for it, but now realizes that discretion is the better part of it. But if you're down 20 to nothing on the road and it's hot. And it's sticky here in Nashville. You know, why not? Why not do something different? Why not try to spark your team? Because if you don't get it, you look like a numbskull. <laughs> Maybe that's it. And that's reason enough with this big crowd here. Donovan getting ready to punt, and he gets it away. High, booming spiral Rashad Baker will take it. That is 26 for the outside. Thrown out of bounds. So Tennessee gets some good field position. He's Fans over there want to see a penalty marker, and they get one. Nate Young on the hit. 45-yard punt, 18-yard return. Rashad Baker is a tremendous athlete. We've seen that. First, we saw the cheap shot hit, but, I mean, he can hit. We see him here on the punt returns. I'm surprised up to this point we haven't seen him more on offense. He did come in for some plays there at the end of the second period, and clearly that's a no-brainer. And how many times do you see it? There's a kicker. There's a kicker, a punter. Get a personal foul? Well, you can be angry if you're punting a lot. Maybe that anger manifests itself with a late hit. After the play, personal foul. Kicking team, 15 yards, first down. All right, coming up on Sunday, 2.30 Eastern Time, 11.30 a.m. Pacific on ABC. ABC Sports Holiday Weekend Bash presented by AT&T Wireless continues. The number 14 LSU Tigers visit the number 16 Virginia Tech Hokies. ABC Sports, the class of college football. First and 10 from the 42 for Casey Clawson from the shotgun formation. Three receivers left, swings it out to Derek Tinsley. He has plenty of room inside the 30 and down at the 26-yard line to pick up a 16 tackle by Nate Young. So the Wyoming dropping off like that, you can throw underneath all afternoon long. And Jason Witten, their start tight end, went down and hit two guys. You know, coming back to that game for a second, LSU and Virginia Tech, a couple of, not a couple, but three very good runners in that game. I already remember Suggs from two years ago with the 28 touchdowns. And of course, Kevin Jones replaced him and rushed for 977 his freshman year. But Bradford Tofield comes back for LSU, and that could be a lot happening on the ground in that game. And on the ground right now, an injured Tennessee player. His number is obscured by the medical staff attending to him right now. Let's see if we can get a look at it. Watch it. Oh, that's a shame. That is just a shame. Right at the end of the play. Leonard Scott. I believe that's Scott. And of course, one of the things you have to realize is a sprinter, which Leonard Scott is. He doesn't see that coming, and you see that all the time with offensive linemen who will get hit from the back and fall down. Leonard Scott has to have his legs. We pointed out how important it was and how fast that young man is. Well, with Kelly Washington not being in this game, Leonard Scott was going to get a lot of the focus because, you know, they're looking for a number two wide receiver for Clawson, and, and the loss of a Leonard Scott for any period of time is really a big one. Everybody talks about the depth that Tennessee has, but I think that Philip Fulmer pointed out that really Scott is one of those people that has veteran experience. He's a senior, and while maybe he's not going to be the go-to guy, he is somebody that can stretch the defense. Defensive coordinators, as a rule, are afraid of 
one thing and one thing in particular, and that's speed. And certainly Leonard Scott has speed, and hopefully this isn't too serious. Scott out of Zachary, Louisiana. Now having having been there, I got to tell you, Jeff. Right now, you really, you desperately want to put weight on that leg. You just do because you want to prove to yourself that you're okay. Watch the right leg right at the end. Watch the right leg as he falls on top of it. And there's the defender. There's just nothing you can do about that. It's unfortunate where the leg gets caught up right. underneath. I can tell you this much. He's very glad that he was on grass because I'm thinking if he's on turf, that's that could be a reconstruction. Well, you see a lot of players able to walk off on their own, very gingerly, of course. But uh, oftentimes that can be an ACL. I think about Jamal Anderson of the Atlanta Falcons who was injured. 1998 was able to get off and, and walk off and uh, subsequently, you know, it was blown. Well, Stacy will find out for us. First and 10 from the 26. Shotgun formation. Clawson looking right, looking left in trouble. Gets it away and it's incomplete. Derek Tinsley was at the 10 yard line and well covered by Tom Vincent and it's incomplete. Bring once again, second. once again, the, the, the time that Clawson is getting is just amazing. He had plenty of team. He had a good five, six seconds. Watch him right here. There's the first receiver. Okay, now there's a second. Now he looks up. There's the third. Now this is third read. He has time to look at his third read. That's a good five to six seconds, and there's just no way. I think certainly that's one of the reasons why, Jeff, that they're throwing as much as they're throwing, knowing that the front four of Tennessee can protect it. Big tackles. Often Husel and Munoz doing a great job this afternoon. You mentioned Rashad Baker. He's back in the game. Maybe they're going to throw to him here. Second and ten from the 26. Baker of free safety playing both ways. I'll let Dion. Plays the throw and it is complete to Montrell Jones, the wide receiver. <laughs> makes the grab and it is a gain of yeah, enough, but very close to a first down. Need a little confidence because you remember on the exact same route, or excuse me, on a dig it, earlier in the half, he dropped that one that went between the eight and the six. And as we pointed out, the coach was really hoping that this young man would step up and show himself. But now he's got a little more confidence now that he caught one. Enough for the first down. First and ten from the 16. Again, 20 to nothing. Balls leading the Cowboys here in the third quarter in Nashville. Great night for football. Maybe a little humid from the Wyoming perspective. And the broadcast. <laughs> I'm not complaining. Blossom <laughs> looking into the end zone. Oliver shoots his big tight end. Jason Witten was out there run so well. Roderick Jackson on the coverage for Wyoming. When you get the two deep and the man underneath, that's what you're looking for in terms of a tight end. He wants to break the seam. And he had him there, but he just threw it a little bit too much. Take a look from the end zone. You'll see the tight end come across. It's going to be the left of your screen. Now the middle of the field is open, but he needs to touch it just a little bit more right there. And that's tough to squeeze it in between there. And that's what Clawson was trying to do. A little less and it would have been six. Numbers on Clawson. So it's second and ten from the 16-yard line. Three receivers to the near side. One to the far side. Shotgun formation. Clawson firing and completing across the middle. Tony Brown making the grab. Tackled by Roderick Jackson. It is a pickup of about nine yards. One of the things that the offensive line for Tennessee did, which was outstanding, they cut their people. And the reason they did that at the line of scrimmage is watch. Watch the man get cut down. Now, Alpen Husel cuts him. Why? Because he wants to create the seam that he can throw through, and so the hands don't come up. Usually, those slants are the ones that get batted down. And Alpen Husel, of course, an academic all SEC, the right tackle, also a co captain, six foot eight, 305. He's a bruiser. Third and one from the seven yard line. Gibbons to the tailback. That's it out for a first down. Jabari Davis. He picks up four. Needed less than one. So the drive continues here to begin the third quarter. Let's check in with Stacy Pates. Guys, I checked with the trainer here over on the Tennessee side, and it's a right lower leg for Leonard Scott. This injury is going to need further evaluation, and they're telling me they're not certain if he'll be back on the playing field today. See no reason to bring him back into the ballgame today. Absolutely right. But if it is a right lower leg, in other words, a calf or a shin, something like that, that's a lot more manageable than the knee. First and goal from the four-yard line. Tennessee with an eye formation. Tinsley in motion. Here is the give. Easy does it. Jabari Davis into the end zone for six. As Tennessee is on the board in the second half. Four yards. 
yard touchdown run. When we talked with Phil Fulmer about what the, the various and sundry backs had to contribute, he mentioned that Jabari Davis, of course, is their bruiser. He's six feet tall, 231 pounds. He, he's reminiscent of Jamal Lewis, although maybe not quite that fast. And it could be that he could have that, uh, that John Riggins role of old, which is he could be the short yardage guy and in that way probably score a lot of touchdowns. Walls with a point after attempted is good. He was talking about Riggins when he was with the Jets or the Redskins? Redskins. There you go. Started up. That yeah. makes sense. The Vols lead the Cowboys here in Asheville. It's 27 to nothing. We're in the third quarter. <laughs> Philip Newman getting ready to kick off his debut. Jones will down it. They'll bring it out at 20. What a great city this is for entertainment. Hard to beat. The Wild Horse Saloon. Used to see a lot of it on cable television. One of the great cowboy acts in all of the United States. Chris Ledoux sings of the western way of life, of cattle, of blue skies, of full rivers, of courageous men and women. We dogs! He can play the guitar. First and ten from the 20-yard line. Two receivers to the left for Casey Bramlin. Play out. Being chased. Pumps loses the football. Tennessee has it. Tennessee with another Wyoming mistake. Leg up the football. Fourth turnover of the afternoon. And a sharp move on that fumble recovery. I'm not sure when we get a chance to see this again if his arm isn't going forward. This could be argued that this was an incompletion. You get a chance to see his right arm. Call it Tom Brady. He sets up. He sets up right in the middle. Now he spreads out. Now he pulls it back. Nope. That was a good call by the official. It was stripped. You know, you Raiders are always arguing those kinds of calls. Well, no, this one clearly, clearly he brought it back and it was stripped. That that one in uh, that one in New England was embarrassing. First and ten from the 11 yard line. Lawson at quarterback. Here's the handoff. Big room for Jabari Davis. And Davis to about the two-yard line. Tackled by Jacques Finn. A gain of nine yards. Let's go to Matt Weiner for an update on the Cornhuskers. Hi, right, Jeff. They're retiring the jersey of Eric Crouch at halftime today, but the new man under center is Jamal Lord. 100-yard day last week in the win over Arizona State. Keeps it here. Scores in Nebraska 7-0. All right, Matt. Tough day for Troy State facing Nebraska. Whoa. Two tight end package for Tennessee. Victor McClure, all 300 pounds of them. Second and two from the three. Good hit of Jabari Davis by Guy Tool. The strong safety who hit him low and put him up in the air. Good quickness on the part of Tool to penetrate from the side and get underneath him. He's going to come from the left of your screen. Great quickness. Otherwise, he's in for the score. You can see all the white shirts have pushed back the brown shirts. Tool, tool with an excellent job of anticipating and upending him. Union, Colorado, and Southeastern Colorado. Third and one from the two. Lawson looking for his tight end, and it's incomplete. Jason Witten was pretty well covered. And the Wyoming defense done their job. Really did. Really did. Because you figured that there's no way they're going to go play action. That should have been a gimme, think, you know, conceivably for Tennessee. But instead, Wyoming was all over. Great coverage in the secondary and good pressure on Pawson for once. Josh Four. Rollins is the one who was on top of it. Fourth and one from the two-yard line. Philip Fulmer says straight ahead now. Again, leap and lean, and into the end zone, Jabari Davis. Second touchdown of the quarter, and Tennessee is opening it up on Wyoming.
If I make the Sam Bam Cunningham reference, I'm sure people think I'm old, but what happened there is the left side of the offensive line for Tennessee got just enough of a push and had them engaged that afforded Jabari Davis the opportunity to jump. A lot of people don't realize that that's what it takes. I don't care how high you jump, if the guys on the other side aren't engaged, they can stop you. Alex Walls, the point after attempt, set field goals of 34 and 19 yards this afternoon. One of the point afters. This one is good. So 34 0, Tennessee leading Wyoming. It was set up by the fumble when Casey Bramlett lost the football. Wyoming was in trouble. Chance to go. I have not. Well, that's right, you're too busy in that one hockey talk singing. <laughs> singing your cheating part, as I recall, on the karaoke machine. I am the master of that. Here is Philip Newman. Are you proud of it? I am uh, not going to reveal anything beyond what I have said. Leonard Jones will down it, and it's out to the 20-yard line. Matt Weimer, take it from here. While you guys discuss, Reba and Roy, We've got Roscoe, Roscoe Parrish for the Hurricanes, the old statue of Liberty modified. And look at Roscoe go, around the left side, one tackle broken. Still moving, and he'll go the distance, Miami, pulling out the tricks against Florida A&M. They're up 28 nothing. Maybe they're, maybe they're up, but I gotta tell you, one of the great nicknames in college football, Florida A&M. I just like the Rattlers. Yeah, that's, that's cool. That's some great players that have come out of there over the years. I'll say. Bullet Bob Hayes. That's who I was thinking of. C.R. Davis, a pickup of four yards. First time we have seen him in the ball game today for Wyoming. I would venture to guess we're going to begin to see a lot of faces we haven't seen so far. Just quickly, I got to throw this in. An old teammate of mine by the name of Henry Lawrence. Henry, if you're watching, another former rapper. From a Raider? Yes, indeed. Seven, Great offensive attack. 73? 74? 70. Good yeah. try, though. Okay, second and six now. Bramlett in trouble and gets it away, pretty much just throwing it out of bounds. I think there's a consideration here, and I realize it's 34 to nothing and you want to be competitive, but there has to be a consideration on the Wyoming sideline as to whether or not the possibility of taking Bramlett out, giving some of the other younger people an opportunity and making sure that your star player is going to be whole for the year. Three years ago, I broadcast this game with Jay Stoner, their quarterback, they taken all those sacks, and finally Dana Dimmel said, that's enough. He sacked him 13 times up there, didn't he? Right On third and six, Bramlett wants to throw, and overshoots his intended target, Bonite. The freshman out of Denver, Colorado, and that'll bring up fourth down. Total yards, Tennessee 334, Wyoming 81. Well, again, I don't think that anybody was fooled by that. They knew that coming in, you had the fourth-ranked team in the nation, and depending upon whatever index you look at, Wyoming was close to triple figures. So I don't think this is a big surprise, and I think that Wyoming has been very game. The plain truth is the Volunteers have better athletes. Luke Donovan with the punt. Mark Jones is the deep man, averaging 41.6 per punt. But just gets it away. Second after 35. Penalty marker goes flying as he goes down to the 43 yard line. Mark Jones with a fine job. 23 yard return. 41 yard punt. Gerald Wright, our referee. Let's hear from him. Officials from the Mountain West Conference. Do you know what? I met him on the plane. I just realized this. I just saw his, yeah, we were on the same plane. Did Son you wander back from first class? Uh, no, as a matter of fact, I wandered up. <laughs> yeah, you're in the stripes, man. You got it working. <laughs> yeah. Like there's a first class from Cincinnati <laughs> to Nashville. Nice man. I was in the cargo section. Let's go to Stacy Page. Stacy. Thanks, guys. The mayor of Nashville. This is Bill Purcell. Now, the city of Nashville and the Sports Council paid two, nearly two and a half million dollars to have the game move here. Were there any specific circumstances? Well, three years ago, our Sports Council saw an opportunity, an opportunity to bring not only a great opening game here for these two teams, but frankly, an opportunity to show off Nashville to a whole new group of fans. And obviously, I think today has proven that was a very wise choice. Would you do it again? Absolutely. I think everyone in these uh, stands, both those from uh, Tennessee and those from Wyoming, would say they'd do it again. 
thank you for your time. Absolutely. Glad you guys are here. This is really a great city to spend some time in. Tennessee Titans Sundays are really special here. The community has really embraced them. You know, they've had a terrific team here. And, you know, you get that marriage of people who love football with a good football team, and it makes for a really great experience here on a Sunday. Unless, of course, you're a visiting NFL team. First and ten from the 33 for Casey Clawson, and the draw play up the middle to Cedric Houston. And Houston picks up five. Bring up second and five, tackled by Derek Glasper out of Austin, Texas. We mentioned earlier the comparison of the first two seasons between the great Peyton Manning and, of course, this young man, and you can see they're awfully close. Very similar. Now, of course, the measurement of Clawson's legacy will be, over these next two years, exactly what he's going to do. If, whether or not he will get a street named after him. Different personal styles, though. They're, they're different kinds of guys. Similar numbers, but different personalities. Second and four from the 39. Three receivers to the near side. One to the far side. Shotgun formation. Firing. Completing. First down for Tennessee. Tony Brown makes the grab. And he gets brought down a 47-yard line. It's a pickup of 10 yards. What about Clawson? Do you keep him in indefinitely in this ballgame? That's a good question. I was just thinking the same thing. My guess is that after this drive, if it culminates in a score, that more than likely we'll start to see some, some substitutes. But he's had a terrific game. And, I, and again, I'm surprised that he's thrown as much as he has. But then again, uh, to a man, we asked the coaches, said, hey, you know, are you looking past this game? And they said, absolutely not. We came to win, and we're not going to hold anything back. So. And a lot of short stuff that he's thrown today, too. That's where it's open. It, it, Wyoming plays predominantly a soft zone. First and 10 from the 47. Here is the give. It is to Cedric Houston. And Houston getting into Cedric Wyoming Houston. territory. It is a gain of six. Herman White on the stop. The middle linebacker out of Denver. His fifth tackle of the afternoon. Ball at the 46-yard line. There's going to be quite a, quite a number of Wyoming players that are going to be high in the tackle stats, I'm guessing, by the end of this game. And the 46-yard line. To be a lot of fatigue on the part of some of those youngsters as well. Will they be better in the Mountain West Conference from what you've seen? Oh yes, I, I certainly, I certainly think so. Plus the fact that I don't think I was about to say there isn't a dominant team in the Mountain West, but now for Colorado State beat Colorado, maybe I have to say there is. Second and three from the 46. Here is the give. It's a Houston. certainly was one of those where we had just mentioned the fact that the Wyoming defense was fatigued. Nobody really gave him a run for his money as he headed for the end zone. I think a lot of that is because they've been on the field just a little bit too much. Alex Walls with a point after attempt. And the route is on. Tennessee leading Wyoming here in the third quarter. It's 41 to nothing. 46 yards for six. Six yards and two touchdowns. Philip Newman kicking off, and Leonard Jones will field it at the five yard line. For the 15, 25. On his feet across the 35 and down at about the 37 yard line. It's a return of 32 yards, tackled by the kicker. Philip Newman. You know what he did very well? Those of you that are a little bit older will recall this as we get a chance to see the volume of tailbacks. Well, certainly Houston is the victor today, clearly with the two long runs and averaging 10 yards per carry. But, of course, if I'm Davis and Tinsley, I say to myself, yo, 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 why didn't I get a shot? Give me some time. I could do it if I afforded the opportunity. But clearly it's been a Houston kind of day. Number 21 has put on a show. I want to see this Gerald Riggs, the freshman from Chattanooga, the son of... Gerald Briggs Sr., who was such a terrific running back in the National Football League. First and 10 from the 36-yard line. Play action. And Brandon going long, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Tennessee. It is the fifth turnover in the afternoon for Sean Baker. The thing about this play is this, is Bradley, you can see the frustration. And you, 
you've documented throughout this game, Jeff, the fact that his problem has been with interceptions. I genuinely don't think that he thought Rashad Baker could make that play. There aren't too many free safeties in the Mountain West Conference that can cover like this, but look at him sprint over, leap and get his feet down in bounds. Very athletic play by Baker because for all intents and purposes, it looks like a pretty good throw, but just a little bit too much air. And as a result, Baker with the pick. Well, if you can find a more athletic secondary in not only the SEC, but in the nation, I, I think you'd be hard pressed to top what Tennessee has going on right now. First and 10 from the 30, new quarterback. And Gerald Riggs has checked into the ball game. The new quarterback is C.J. Leak, and it is Riggs who gets the call. You know, you're talking about older viewers perhaps getting one of your analogies. I'm going to tell you how old I am. I remember Gerald Riggs sitting on my lap in the locker room of the Atlanta Falcons at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium in the 80s, waiting for his dad to come out of the training room. That's how old I am. Wow. Wow. Well, it's not, that's not quite like being a waiter at the Last Supper, but, you know, it's, it's close. Well, his dad was a player. Man, oh, man. There's some really bad Atlanta teams, too. Second and ten from the 30. I formation. C.J. Lee. First throw. And it is incomplete. Incomplete to C.J. Faton, who was juggling the football. I'm not sure the coaches agree. And you can see that Fulmer is involved in this game, and as he just let fly an expletive. Philip, you're up 41 nothing. Well, then, take a look. There's the catch. Uh, he's got a beef. He bobbled it, but it, it never touched the ground. That should have right. been a completed pass. But it just goes to show that he's involved. And of course, if you're second or third string, you like to see that in your head coach. But even though it's 41 to nothing, he's paying attention. We're at the Coliseum in Asheville, Tennessee, number four, Tennessee, showing why so many people in the country believe that they are a team capable of winning a national championship this year as they lead Wyoming 41 to nothing. Heldrick Williams in the ball game, and it is Williams who gets the call, the draw, and spins past the 40, up to the 41, loses the football. Wyoming says they have it. And uh, let's see. The line judge is calling it down. 13-yard gain, first down for Tennessee if it is, is indeed fall down. First down. This is one of the reasons you see the spin. That's one of the reasons why most of the great running backs, both at, both at this level and the professional level, are not 6'2 or 6'3. More like 5'9, 5 5'10, 5 5 5'11. You can see with that low center of gravity, he's able to spin out. And of course, right at the end, he loses it. But it's a good call by the officials. He stopped right there. First and 10 from the 43-yard line. We'll go with three receivers, two to the right, one to the left. Here is the give. It is to Keldrick Williams. And Williams is stopped just short of the 45-yard line. Tackle by Tam Pruitt. Let's go to Matt Weimer. Marshall and Appalachian State at Marshall Netflix Stadium. Bob Pruitt's team, 22-0 against one double A team's Byron Leftwich gives them the lead on the one-yard plunge and then on the two-point conversion finds Jason Rader and Thundering Herd now up 17-7. Oh, I love to watch Leftwich play. Man. Steve Levy and I had that GMAC Bowl last year that double overtime 64 to 61. I, I don't know that I've ever seen a college quarterback play as well as a good man. He's amazing. Pitch Gerald Riggs right side and the freshman upended at midfield by Nate Young. It's a gain of six and it will bring up third down. Well, Man. I, I, I'm sorry, Todd. We're going to take a look here at one of the really terrific running backs in the NFL of the 80s. Number 42, Gerald Riggs, who replaced William Andrews and was some very, very thin Atlanta teams of the late 80s. He was offense. He was everything that they did. So went the Falcons. So went Gerald Riggs. So that, that begs the question, why is it then that his son took William Andrews' number? Well, they got along pretty well. <laughs> That's a good question. Just, I just Very that, good point. You know that Atlanta reference point. I thought you did. Yes, I did. Third and three. First down. Keldrick Williams picks up five. Only needed three. And he is down. Word from the coaches, though, with regards to Gerald Riggs, is he's not quite as husky as his father was, but they say he's faster. His father lives in Chattanooga these days. Been working in media up there, I think, a few years ago. I don't know what he's doing now. 
Well, if he were to if he were to excel, which is probably the case, at number 31, that was Jamal Lewis' number. Pretty good tailback, and of course, rookie thousand-yard rusher for the Ravens the year they won the Super Bowl. Tennessee 23 first downs, Wyoming six. First and ten from the 46 of the Cowboys. Here is the give, and it is to Keldrick Williams. Williams picks up one, and of second and nine. Well, next week, Tennessee will take on Middle Tennessee, and then they will get ready for the Florida Gators in Knoxville, the 21st of September. So is there a danger in not trying to show too much? I mean, it, it no. is almost a cliche to say that, but there is an element of truth. In no, it. no. And the reason I, I'm of the theory, you, you have one or two schools of thought, not showing too much, or you show so much that they have to prepare for more things than they usually do. I'm of the latter, uh, the latter school. I think I think let everything hang out and give them a chance to see, to see what they can do with it. Penalty markers. And we'll see if this goes against Tennessee, which it may. Thursday, September 5th, 8.30 Eastern, ESPN. The 2002 NFL season kicks off on ESPN. Jeff Garcia and the 49ers, a strong-looking team, looking to build on last year's success. They'll take on Tiki Barber and the New York Giants. Coverage begins with a special edition of NFL Countdown presented by Coors Light at 6.30 Eastern. For more on our lineup of upcoming games, log on to ESPN.com, keyword schedule. The last five meetings, pretty much all 49ers. Second and 14, Leak firing to the right side from Blake Jones. And Jones picks up a few yards. Giants had a very quiet offseason because of the salary cap. They didn't have any key acquisitions. And, and I, I think this is a Giants team uh, that, that, that's going to struggle here in 2000. Well, San Francisco didn't either, but then again, they were afforded the luxury of standing pat. I was going to make reference to Stacey Pate's report earlier with regards to Kelly Washington, who proclaimed himself the future. Well, after the San Francisco New York Giant promo, it occurs to me, <laughs> Terrell Owens is the now. He's a player. And Terrell is from Chattanooga. Played at UT chat. <laughs> All sorts of references. Excellent. Thank you. Beautiful. Third and seven from the 43. CJ Lee keeping the football and advancing to about the maybe about the line of scrimmage, in fact. Jay McNeil is there to wrap him up. If the name CJ Leak sounds familiar, it is because he was a transfer from Wake Forest. He was the starter there, a very highly recruited young man out of Charlotte, I believe. In fact, you know, all the big schools. He decides to go to Wake Forest, which surprised everybody. He had a severe near knee injury, decided to transfer, and now here he is. And I'm guessing that he's banking on Clawson to leave early because they are the same class. They're both juniors. Dustin Colt with punting, and it is a high spiral. Scotty Vines will let it sail over his head, and to the back of the end zone it goes. It will come out to the 20-yard line, a 44-yard punt by Dustin Colt. Check in with Stacy Pates. Well, guys, with five minutes to go at the end of the first half, Ryan McGuffey, who you'll notice as the offense is taking the field for Wyoming, is not out there. He suffered a hit in the head from a shoulder pad. Then his head really hit the ground hard. Guys, he has a concussion, I'm told, and he's not going to come back today. We'll see how he, how he feels in the coming weeks. McGuffey had some injury problems last year. He missed the final two games of the Cowboys' season. So they need him healthy if they're going to fare well out west. Casey Bramlett remains a quarterback, first and ten now. He's got four wideouts. And the give is to Leonard Jones. And Jones gets nothing. Tackled by Robert Peace. A lot of different numbers in there for Tennessee on defense as well. Good, op good opportunity to let their second and third stringers get a chance to play. You don't hear a lot of middle linebackers named Peace, do you? <laughs> no, you don't. Smokey. Ah, uh, yes. Everything is good in Tennessee. Up 41 to nothing. Good old Rocky Top. Still Tennessee, number four. Tennessee 41. Wyoming nothing. Tennessee on defense. Wyoming with the ball. Second and nine. From the 21. Bramlett dumping it across the middle. The catch is made by Bonite. And the former quarterback at an annual high school in Denver. Bramlett is able to get more than enough for a first down. Gets 14 yards. 
ESPN2 game track. If you talk about what we've seen so far, I think, Todd, you begin with turnovers. Five well, overall. Well, certainly there's been a problem in Bramlett. You talked about as to whether or not he was going to be able to rectify his problems turning the ball over. And once again, there's the injury problem. Both Burnett and Scott hurt. We know Burnett's situation. Hopefully Scott's is not as problematic. Wyoming's first first down this half, courtesy of Bo Knight, the freshman. First and ten from the 36. Here is the give. It is to Leonard Jones. Jones over the right guard picks up about five yards. Let's go to Matt Weimer. Miami laid it on the Rattlers of Florida A&M. Ken Dorsey, 13-yard line, looking for ethnic sands. He's got him. He'll get into the end zone. So Miami up big, 35 nothing. Meanwhile, Duke hanging on, trying to stop that 23-game losing streak up by four at the start of the fourth. Ever see the Florida A&M band? It just doesn't get much better than that. They are they're really spectacular. Let me tell you, if, if Duke were to win that game, that would be a monumental upset. East Carolina is a very good football team. Second and five, Bramlett has the first down. And a nice job tackled by Julian Battle. It is a gain of eight yards. And I'm sure everybody from Laramie and everywhere else in the great state of Wyoming kind of holding their breath when they see Bramlett running against this Tennessee team. Well, once again, I, I bring up the point I made earlier, which is why I, I frankly don't understand why he's still in the game. But evidently, Coach Koning has his reasons. First and ten. From the 48 of Wyoming, they've got four wideouts, three to the near side, one to the far. Bramlett and overshoots a wide open target in Scotty Vines out of Alexander City, Alabama. You mentioned earlier that people compare his arm strength to Elway's. Arm strength is one thing, but not unlike pitchers. <coughs> the three most important things, same thing in real estate, location, <laughs> location, location. And, and his accuracy, uh, at least tonight, has not has absolutely not been there. Second and ten. Here is the give to Leonard Jones. Jones. Oh. Taking a tough hit by Rashad Moore. Gain of five here. yards. One of the advantages that Wyoming does have is that they have 16 starters returning from 2001 and offensively 10 of 11 starters returning. And you see they are effective in the passing game. But if they're going to make a dent in the Mountain West Conference, they, they do have to find a runner. And I don't know if Arma is the answer or not, but they do have to find a runner. Game. Third and six. 0 oh, for 7 on third down conversions for the Cowboys. Here's Bramlett. And it is caught enough for the first down. Fine throw and fine grab by Malcolm Floyd. All 6'6", 210 pounds of him. So they're 1 for 8 now on third down conversion. Just as we were talking about the arm strength of Bramlett. Holy cow, does he deliver this ball on the nose. The six foot six Floyd. Ooh, I, don't, I don't think there's any way he could have dropped that. It just embedded itself in his chest. That's a strike. Kurt Schilling. First and ten from the 38 yard line. Same formation, three plays in a row. Here's the draw play, Leonard Jones. And not much doing. Gain of three, second and seven. Tackle by Omari Hand. Most everybody's still staying here. I mean, you, you look around, and uh, even though it's 41 to nothing, still staying. Here is Bramlett, and it's complete! Bonite makes the catch, touchdown! Javon Bonite, a 35-yard touchdown pass from the quarterback, Casey Bramlett. It seemed like any big play that Wyoming has had has involved Bonite. As you pointed out, a converted quarterback, which is a frequent conversion at the collegiate level because in high school, that's where your best athletes play. Bramble able to buy an awful lot of time rolling to his right. Bonite finds the seam in the defense. The result is the first touchdown for the Cowboys. There have been so many great athletes out of Manuel High School in Denver. They have historically had just basketball powerhouses so many years. J.D. Wallum, one after attempt, and it is good. So Wyoming will not get shut out. They are on the scoreboard here in the fourth quarter in Asheville. 41-7 balls. Bonite is the man. And plays 80 yards, 313 to time. Bonite, 35-yard touchdown reception. And 
The hooping and hollering you heard was all the way from Rock Springs and Rollins and Landover. Lander, excuse me. And in Maryland, where there's some Wyoming fans too. <laughs> good, yeah, good save. Thank you. J.B. Wallen to kick off. And Corey Watkins will bring it out. Watkins tapping it to the far side. Look out. One man to beat. The kicker. And it was dropped down. Dropped down. Gary White on the stop. Saw some great speed. 62 yards. By Corey Larkins. It's been said over and over again that you've got to stay in your lanes. Watch all the brown shirts are going to be congregated into one area. Now when he cuts back, there's nobody left in their lane, and there's nothing but grass to the outside. And except for the blazing speed of Gary Wright, who runs him down right here. Otherwise, this would have been a touchdown. Good hustle by Wright. First and 10 from the 30-yard line. Tennessee 41. Wyoming 7. Two receivers to the right. Jason Clawson. Out. And C.J. Leak now is the quarterback. Gerald Riggs on the give. Pick up a four, second and six. Wyoming's last drive successful. Well, those things, I, I guess if you're looking for something positive, that's that's nice. But the fact that that was the first with, uh, about, what, 12 and a half minutes left in the fourth quarter, that that's not altogether positive. Second and eight. Leak play action, rolling right, running for his life. And throws it out of bounds. Montrell Jones, the wide receiver, carried Gary Wright along with him in tow. CG Leak looks just, uh, I don't want to say rusty. But obviously, without game experience over the last, what, two years now, certainly you can't expect him to come in here and be fresh, but he does need the experience if, for whatever reason, Clawson would get hurt. And the other reason why, as opposed to just running the clock out, they want to see what he can do besides just hand off. Tennessee on third down conversion, 6 of 13. He's got a third and eight here in the fourth quarter. From the shotgun, C.J. Lake. Plenty of time going long into double coverage. One handed grab attempt made by Fagan. But he was double covered about five yards deep in the end zone. Complete. Tom Vincent and Nate Young were back there. Put a little bit too much air underneath that, trying to touch it just right. But of course, double coverage. Wyoming was all over it. Now this will force a longer field goal attempt. You know, this is a time where Walls gets a little confidence. You say to yourself, what's the big deal here, 44 to 7? There's a precipitous drop-off in terms of percentage inside of 40 and beyond 40. This will be from 44 yards out for Alex Walls. The hold and the kick. It is long enough, and it is good. So everything Tennessee does is good tonight. I say, I say that because you can store that up for later. When the time comes that he needs that 44 yard, he knows, hey, I kick it. Seven in the fourth quarter. Philip Newman kicking off. Bo Knight and Leonard Jones are deep. It is high, and this will be returned by Leonard Jones. And he is up to about the 18-yard line. Let's go to Matt Weiner for an update. Number two team in the country gets started against North Texas. Remember last year, Cedric Benson selected the team's offensive MVP as a freshman. Right back at it. Up the gut for his score. Horns up 7-0. Meanwhile, Georgia and Clemson going at David Green. Another terrific sophomore finds Damian Gary. Bulldogs up 7 zip. I love that Clemson-Georgia rivalry. That's absolutely terrific. Yeah, people can play in the play in the years. They don't mention David Green when they mention all those other really good quarterbacks. He had a terrific year. Was he a freshman of the year in the SEC? First and 10 from the 14 is the give. It is Randy Russell. And Russell picked up a couple of yards. Let's go to Stacy Pates along the sideline. Stacy. 
Well, guys, you never know who you're going to see down here on the sidelines. Do you recognize this guy? 2,000 Olympic gold medalist in Greco-Roman wrestling. This is Rulin Gardner. Now, you were here. He's a native of Wyoming, so he came to speak to the guys. Now, you gave him a speech about what it's like to be an underdog facing someone who is amazingly good at what they do. Mm. And when you when you think about that, how did you, I guess, leading up to your gold medal round is where you probably took this speech to these guys. Well, I did. You know, you look at these kids and, you know, coming from Wyoming, being an underdog, you know, the population of Wyoming isn't as much as, you know, the Tennessee, and we have to compete with those guys. I said, hey, you know what? You know, there's you know, 11 guys on the field, 11 on 11. You know, each of you take care of your roles, you know, take care of your responsibilities, you know, help each other out. You know, you'll be able to, you know, survive. You'll be able to make it and, you know, stick together as a team. You know, you never know what you can expect if you give heart and hard work. And you never know that you would come home with an Olympic gold medal because facing Alexander, that had to be scary. Uh, it was, you know, 13 years of being undefeated, you know, never lost a match, you know, just, you know, having that over my head just was really on there. But I said, you know what, I have a chance, you know, I'm an American, you know, I grew up and born and raised in a small town in Wyoming. You know, nobody ever gave me a chance. Why not go out there, commit myself 100% and you never know what's possible. Could you beat Carillon again? That's a, you know, that's a tough one. People say, you know, is he going to come back? I hope not, you know, personally, because, you know, the specimen that he is is just incredible. But, you know, every dog has his day, and, you know, I had my day then, and now if he does come back, you know, I want to be there able to wrestle him again. Well, it was great to have you here tonight. Guys, he told me that he has a message for Todd. Well, Todd, I was wondering, you know, you say, you know, you went to BYU. You know, what about go WYO? <laughs> I don't know if you want to come down here and contest that, Todd. Be my guest. Hey, all I know, all I know is watching him against Corella, and that was that that may have been the most significant moment, at least for the United States in terms of the Olympics. Corella and the Siberian Bear had been undefeated for 13 years. The guy was awesome. The guy was just amazing in terms of Greco-Roman wrestling. And that's one of the all-time great upsets. Becker will take it. He is across midfield, 45, 40, and brought down. At the 38-yard line, good to know that Rulon Gardner also is doing better after the snowmobile incident where he lost a couple of toes. 44-7 balls over the Cowboys. First and 10 for C.J. Leak. And he fires. It is complete. And the catch is made. And it is made by, it is a pickup of eight yards for Tennessee. I'm Jeff Hollinger along with Todd Christensen, and uh, it's been all Tennessee, as I think everybody expected, 44-7 to over Wyoming. I think Tennessee has done anything to hurt themselves in terms of national rankings. They're still number four, well, maybe even better than that. I don't know about hurt themselves in rankings, but they did hurt themselves. Key injuries. Burnett, they're starting, they're starting outside linebacker. That's going to be costly. We don't quite yet know how hurt Scott is, so I think that Coach Fulmer has to be concerned about that, although he has to be very happy with where both his offense and defense operate. Second and one with the ball at the 30-yard line. And Leak on the handoff to the tailback. That's enough for a first down. Kelbrick Williams. He picks up five. Only needed one. Plenty to go there. We'll be in Provo on Friday night. Hawaii at Brigham Young University. Chance to see your son in the, that uniform of the Y. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be an interesting contest. If, if you're somebody who likes to see the ball thrown around a lot, remember June Jones, the disciple of the run and shoot. And of course, last year's game against Brigham Young, Hawaii, absolutely shellacked them by a 72 to 45 count. So I'm guessing that uh, those people in Provo want a little payback. First and 10 from the 27 to give to the tailback again, Keldrick Williams. And this time he'll pick up two yards, so second and eight. Yeah, it is strange in the SEC, Todd, without Steve Spurrier and. I would think that you know, the, the profile of Philip Fulmer has always been high in the SEC, but but even more so now. I think it, it changes with us for greater discipline. No, no, I do. I do for that reason because now he's he's the dean of SEC coaches. He's the guy that's out front, and of course, you look at all the lists that they have of him in terms of his coaching record. It's outstanding, over 80 percent. It's unbelievable, and I think that I think that when they won the national championship in '98, that took a little of the onus off of him in terms of responsibility and the expectations here are so high but as he pointed out to us he welcomes it that's fine and there you see the bugaboo that was the Florida Gators first seconds and thirds wow hmm. never had you know that's that's typical of that phrase that your broadcasters use all the time they don't rebuild they reload and, you know I mean shouldn't there be one fifth in there one off year but no Look, Tennessee loses four of their defensive linemen, and 
you know, amazing. Awful and lost his step. Third and six from the 23. Two receivers to the left. C.J. Leak rolling, firing, and it's incomplete. As Hannon was the intended target out of Sarasota, Florida. Chris well, there's Hannon. Th there's an indication of rust right there, Jeff. I mean, wide open. You roll out. You got the got a blocker in front of you. S sits down in the hook zone. Easy throw. Doesn't make it. Let's we'll see Alex Walls again. Not only has he been active on kickoffs and point after attempts, but he has hit from 34, 19, and 44. This attempt will be from 40 yards out. Well, last year he was an 80 percenter, 15 out of 20, long of 51. And the kick is long enough, and it is good. And the kick is gone. 47 to 7, Tennessee leading Wyoming. 6.53 left in the ballgame. A lot of smiling faces wearing orange shirts. Double yards, Tennessee 454, Wyoming 163. We've got 653 left in the ballgame. Philip Newman will kick off. Six plays, 16 yards, 237 at time, and walls the 40 yard field goal. Newman steps up into the football. It is high, and Bonite takes it out about the two. It's up to the 10, and crosses the 15. And is tackled immediately by the Wyoming special teams. And I think we're looking at the younger brother that's going to come in and play quarterback. Number 17, Corey Bramlett, the freshman from Wheatland, Wyoming. 6'4", 205 pounds. The younger brother of Casey. Bramlett's very proud of the boys and rightfully so in Wheatland. I just, I was just, I, you know what? I was just thinking the same thing. I don't care if it's 47 to 7. My dad and mom have just got to say, this is great. Right, Miss Ed. To see both my kids play. Draw play. It is to C.R. Davis. Davis with some running room, upended short of the 30 yard line. That's a pickup of about 14 yards and enough for a first down for the Wyoming Cowboys. How excited must he be? How, must, how excited as a freshman you get to play in this game, in this stadium? I, I, I don't care if it's empty or you're behind. This is great. It's an experience he'll talk about the rest of his life. Telling somebody, someone, the time that he played here at the Coliseum in Nashville, one of the Titans. Handoff is C.R. Davis. He's a great looking family, too. The youngest son is a high school quarterback. Connor and the dad played for Wyoming fullback and his alignment and the handoff is to C.R. Davis now, now that's that, that's somewhat interesting you would think that you know that tough guy position you know that, that somehow that's odd that the genes filter down I guess you know what I guess what that means you got to give mom a lot of credit <laughs> for giving that kid the, those kids the ability to throw right you've always got to give mom a lot of credit oh, yeah <laughs> Third and eight. And off right from the shotgun here. Three receivers to the right side of the football field and one to the left. Corey Bramlett, and it's incomplete. Target was Malcolm Floyd, the big six foot six junior. Well, tonight at 8:45 Eastern here on ESPN2, John Robinson and the UNLV Rebels will open up their season. Number 25, Wisconsin, led by Anthony Davis. You know, if you're going to be a running back, you should be named Anthony Davis. They are looking to go 2 0. For more on our lineup of upcoming games, log on to ESPN.com keyword schedule, and we'll go to that game right after this one. Number 20, and we'll start on Young in Tennessee. <laughs> Donovan now punting. He's had seven punts tonight for an average of 41.3. Derek Tingley is the deep man for Tennessee. And this is the punt that takes a Wyoming bounce and goes out of bounds at the 24. It's a 46 yard punt. Good job by Donovan. Let's check in with Matt Weiner right here, right now. Texas and North Texas. Roy Williams, good idea. Reverse. There he goes around the left side. 
15 yards, doesn't quite get in, gets down to the five. That's up Chris Sims, who goes up and over for the one. 14 0 Texas up on North Texas. Meanwhile, Duke, time running out on the losing streak. They're up by seven with that losing streak standing at 23. Duke, that would be huge. Duke Fever. On first and ten, Leaks pass is complete. It's incomplete to Hannon. Well, you see that that's the longest losing streak right there in college football. And if that were to fall down, there would be rejoicing in Durham. And maybe doing more than just looking forward to the opener of basketball season. Yeah, the Cameron Crazy's got nothing to do, right? Maybe this is where they start to party hard. <laughs> The last time Duke was rocking in football, Steve Spurrier was their head coach. Good point. Yeah. Very good. Second and ten. And the give is to Gerald Riggs. Gerald Riggs and the carry. Tennessee schedule, Middle Tennessee next week. And then they get ready for Florida in Knoxville. And then it's uh, Rutgers. In fact, nine of 12 games are in Tennessee. How does it get better than that? Yeah, exactly right. That that's that certainly has to be helpful. And of course, Florida in Knoxville, that's always a pivotal game. And I, of course, the question is always asked, why do they play it so early? The game is always in September. You think they play it later in the season? Third and 11, C.J. Leak on the run, wide open, and target is Hannon. Hannon has the first down, turns up field, he's to the 41-yard line, and that is a gain of 19 yards. Well, of course, in October, they're fully into their SEC schedule. And that Georgia game, of course, is pivotal, along with arguably the three big games for them would be Florida, Georgia, and, of course, Miami comes to Knoxville a little bit later on. But Georgia now has a little bit of confidence, having beaten them the last two times. Yeah, that's going to be a great game in Athens. First and ten. Leak. Throwing, and it is complete to Hannon. It was tackled at the 48-yard line. That's a gain of seven. Tackled by Gary Wright. You know, it's not so easy for Wyoming either as they will have to take on Washington, who almost beat Michigan today at the Big House. And then, they've, you know, they're at Colorado State. CSU's 2-0, and and they look like a pretty good football team, too. Sonny Lubick has just done a fabulous job there in Fort Collins. It's amazing. It, it, really, it is. really is amazing what he's done. Second and five. Pitch. Right side to Kendrick Williams. And Williams across midfield. And thrown back. November means five games for the Volunteers. There's that Miami game, November 9th. The first regular season meeting between these two schools. Is that is that televised by chance? Do you I know? My sense is it will probably be on TV. Oh, if not, right. there'll be some streaming on the web from someone's basement. <laughs> Okay. Nine or twelve. Nashville may not be home, but it's close enough to bus for a team that really doesn't need any help. Yep. Third and three. CJ Leak doesn't like it. Wants to do it right with 228 left in the ball game. Timeout leading 47 to 7. Let's check in with Matt Weiner. Matt. Uh, Jeff, Georgia coach Mark Rick says, quote, it's like going against a relative playing Terry about his Clemson team. 7-0 UGA. Bernard Rampert goes in in this family affair all tied up at 7. i tell you what, I saw Woody Dantzler uh, about 10 days ago. Was it 10 days ago? It was, uh, it was about, about 9 days ago against uh, the Falcons in a Dallas Cowboys uniform. Run one 94 yards for a touchdown on a kickoff return. You know, I think I saw it on the ESPN highlight, and then last night when I had some a little insomnia, they had it on their HBO show, and they showed it again. Be interesting as to whether they, they were debating about, you know, one of those, those, you know, those shows, right? That get really up close and personal. Sure. And they had the coaches meeting. They were dating, debating as to whether or not he was going to make the team. He said, "We really need him to make a play," and sure enough, he made that play. So, 94 yards. He's got great speed. 
think the only question about him was he big enough to be a running back in the National Football League. No, he, he can be a situational player. He can be a Dave, Dave Megan type. They're saying the same thing about Antoine Randall-L. And clearly, for the exhibition season, he's proven that size is no big deal. No pun intended. Total yards, Tennessee, 478. And Wyoming, 177. Clemson still looking to find their way post Danny Ford. Danny Ford. Don't forget, with regards to that Wisconsin UNLV game, Jason Thomas, who was almost everybody's All-American coming into last year, struggled mightily. And I think that in the offseason, he's really worked. He's lost a little bit of weight. I think he's going to throw a little bit better this year than he did last. He's one of the great athletes yeah. in college football. League sack, loss of 11 by 12. Wyoming band. Some cool facial hair. So fourth down. Side of two minutes to play. Stadium starting to empty out. And Wyoming will get the ball at the 22 yard line. It's a 42 yard punt and a three yard return. All right, 49ers and the Giants, September 5th, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. The 2002 NFL season kicking off 49ers. And the Giants coverage begins. A special edition of NFL Countdown brought to you by Coors Light at 6.30 Eastern. For more on our lineup of upcoming games, log on to ESPN.com. Keyword is scheduled. Here's one for you. I know we're... Can, what else can we think of? Here's one. Here's one for you. In that game, both starting quarterbacks will wear number five. Now, when does that happen? Huh? One will be more mobile than the other. Well, no, no, but I mean, what are the chances of that? You know, you get used to the same numbers, 12, 14, 16, that sort of thing. Both are wearing number five. Our crack staff will research that. <laughs> Our crack staff statistician Rick Baker will find out for us the last time two NFL quarterbacks who were starting both wore number five. Paul, Paul what, Horning, what do you mean, Rick? What are you saying? Paul You're Horning not? was playing quarterback, probably. Uh, Take it back that far. Did Harmon Wages ever play quarterback? <laughs> no, he did not. Oh, I knew you loved that no, Atlanta no, reference. Another Falcon reference. You've gotten them all in. Second and four now. <laughs> now there's one more. Tobin wrote. Tobin wrote's last team that he played for in the NFL. Uh, Detroit Broncos. Well, you you're a Denver guy. Came Come out on. of retirement. See, that's not true. You're, you're asking that's me not, these questions. That's not trivia. That's minutia. And then, then, Come you're, on. then you're disappointed when you get an answer. You're right. Well, no, I'm disappointed that I, I, I'm pouting because I didn't get it right. If you're going to be Alex Trebek, you have to be pleased when someone gets the answer right. Okay. Trebek. Thanks a lot. Give me a daily double. <laughs> so I can make up for it. Double or nothing. 714 home runs. Bay blank. Ruth. Yay. I'll make it a Wyoming question as well. Jim Kick. Very good. And here's the handoff. It is to C.R. Davis. We've got 15 seconds left. Lloyd Eaton is the answer, by the way. All right, that is it. Tennessee has defeated Wyoming, and they have done it convincingly here in Nashville at the Coliseum. 12 seconds are left. We'll take another snap here. His daughter, Philip Homer, with Brittany. To his left, always is accompanied by one of his daughters. It's a nice tradition. It's it? a great thing. It's cute. She's a diver and may attend UT as well. Fine apple. And that'll do it. 47 to 7. Balls of the Cowboys. Scott, I'll see you in Provo by the end of the week. Look forward to Young in Hawaii. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Todd Christensen, Stacey Pates. And our entire ESPN2 crew, I'm Jeff Hollinger.